Um, even though in my own mind, right, there's a certain amount of coolness to that. I, I, uh, I'm not doing that to be cool. Um, it's kind of setting the tone as far as keeping it real. You know, I am what I am, and I'm not more than that. <laughs> And many of you might be saying, like, you ain't worth backside of a penny, bro. You might be more right than the rest of them, you know. But every so often, a hack or a hoax rings true anyway. Even a blind squirrel finds a nut every now and then. <laughs> Said it before, I don't know why. I don't know why I'm focused on this thing. I think maybe part of it is simply because, like, some part of what little bit of create, you know, whatever bit of creativity possesses me, whatever little bit of that is, in a sense, is like trying to squeeze out and like express. Because I've been looking more, I didn't expect to, but once I came across that uncircumcised lips quote from the uh, Old Testament of Moses, you know, once I came upon that, um, opened up for me the whole Egyptian thing, and uh, so that obviously all ties in with Arabia, Canaan. And trying to decipher this whole bag and I found it to be very disturbing I found I found studying the Bible chronologically and this is definitely my advice um, why would my advice count I don't know <laughs> stranger things have happened but my advice is listen to the Bible chronologically because it does build. There's a difference between listening to like a part of a sonata and the whole thing, right? Or some famous piece of opera or some famous speech from a movie without taking it in context and even though the bible isn't like this that whatever and there's different versions but there's more or less a consensus and there's more or less a cloud an electron cloud cloud you know you can you could consider different parts of the bible as like the protons of the nucleus of whatever this adum is and you could and you could consider all of the known um, apocrypha and uh, you know, off-broadway apocrypha you could consider all of that a little bit like the uh, random distribution of the electron clock but it's all about one story. And so to reconcile it is a geometric problem. And there's still, despite the fact that we know the quote unquote random distribution of electron clouds, I don't know if I'm saying that right technically, but maybe if you know enough about it, you get, you get my gist. You know, the shapes of these potentialities in three dimensions of what we call the electron cloud that particular cymatic is it an ethereal cymatic I don't know I'm still always curious about the idea of like between um, 
an electron or a particle's place in its momentum and not being able to discern both at the same time. And if that's not just a weakness of our geometry, specifically Cartesianism, which leaves out uh, tetrahedrons as they coalesce around octahedrons within the Cartesian structure, never mind at what angle because affine geometry can be performed on more or less Cartesian systems that need not be square. They just need preserved distances. Again, I don't know a lot about this stuff, but I think a lot about this stuff, and I know a little. <laughs> I've looked into it a lot, and it's not my... It's not my playground, but... It's the playground where all the good toys are. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to do more boom chicka boom chicka boom chicka boom stuff. That's what I was saying is I've noticed this shift in me lately, and it's I don't know what it is. I'm seeking beauty, but I have a I still have a, an adolescent, late 20th century mindset, a very superficial mindset or concept of beauty. Theoretically, I feel as though I have a very expansive concept of beauty, but in my bones, in my marrow, my heart, but in my bones and my marrow, something that is antithetical to what I aspire to has been built or persuaded to the point of my marrow such that reconceiving at a visceral level my conception of beauty it's a, it's a Herculean effort it's a Davidian effort. My misconception of beauty is the Goliath that my David must slay. And I'm much older than he. With a much with a much shorter sling and a smaller rock. It might not be the miracles that we read about, but it's going to take a miracle for me to viscerally inhabit the aesthetic. To viscerally inhabit the cognition. For me to, to hold. To possess. The knowledge of beauty as it is and is and as it ought be in the face of the established artifice of the beauty that, that is not beautiful as it is but on whole as I stand before it already in awe and confusion. <laughs> in a sense, awe alone is pretty simple. Wow. End of story. But if you say wow and how, then you got a whole world of trouble. <laughs> where we're at. Can't avoid it. It's not even like we have the luxury of choosing wow and how. It's like wow and how is like hampering down being like this is the time. <laughs> wow was over. How has come.
But anyway, uh, yeah, all I want to do is my boom chicka. I thought I had some innovations. They sounded good up here. Right? So, I'm probably going to really embarrass... No, I'm definitely going to really embarrass myself, but... There's something about trying to get something that's awesome here and here out in any way. I guess probably it always fails, uh, falls short. And I guess the greats among us, you know, they find a way any anyway. Right? Me fumbling as I am. What what's in here and in here is awesome. And everything I do is always just like a sliver. And then I think of those who have really done things that are like, whoa. You know, art, science, humanitarianism, humanitarianism, religion. I mean, you know, football, <laughs> basketball. Um, or just people I met who there are no histories for. Or good categories to stuff them in it's, wow you know including every kind of hero historical or mythological but especially the historical ones like anybody who ever did it like very stereotypically, Martin Luther King Jr. or Dimebag Darrell. They made amazing, they did amazing things with their mind, expressed through their body, through their words, through their actions, sound. They touch people, you know. Imagine what, imagine what was up here and in here in them, right? Like I make shit, and what what's in here and up here, solid fucking gold, man. <laughs> so for those people who actually make solid fucking gold, imagine what's here and here in them, human as they are, flawed as they are whatever just saying so anyway to mention two such enormous figures before the the expose of my complete embarrassment is daunting until I recognize that like that's that's the whole fact or that that's the whole fact of the matter that the great ones come for us morons yeah, I was just watching this thing on uh, pawn pawn shops this pawn shop show and they were talking about this uh, Don Quixote book which reminded me of Nine Gates you know but this was different it was some pawn what is it pawn pawn stars some pawn shop show reality you know pawn pawn shop show anyway it had some Don Quixote stuff and I didn't realize I knew it was an old book in one of the first books but apparently like that was like kind of the first famous novel I guess or at least superficially it's in that category And he was an idiot. But I guess his great daring is that he stuck his neck out. Dipped his toe in the water. Or threw his whole body in the water he only should have. By conventional standards, dipped his toe in. But he threw his whole fucking life into it. 
he remains. A triumphant, a triumphant moron. That's not to justify the way in which I'm moronic, but there's only one Don Quixote, and we can't hope individually to rise to that level of integrity though it's an integrity that has coalesced over time at least to a degree but we can extend our necks and reach out our toes we can dip our toes I'm glad YouTube ain't scratch and sniff <laughs> we can reach out our toes you know we can dip our toes so. I'm a little ashamed that I still feel I need to make a 20 minute preface to just going bow, 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 and not feeling bad about it. But that's who I am in the time I've been born. One of my main goals is making sure that no one, as good as I have it, right, hawks and owls do not hunt me day in day out morning noon and night so I've got it pretty good but still <laughs> I find even the the physically safe places where emotional trauma happened to me, I still find that unacceptable. Partially in my naivete, and partial, partially in the truth of the future that pulls us toward it, that itself, the Omega Point, God, wishes to eradicate. It will be eradicated. That is not a question. The question is, will we be there as individuals, as individuals with memory, with remembrance, reconciled through time? Will we exist? in that place. As persons in the person. It's a way of talking about it. It's silly, you know, it's fucked up how, like, the silliest thing is still, like, so serious. The littlest, the littlest thing matters so much. Yeah.
it takes a while, it takes a, while, a long while for the throat to open up. If I had the patience to do it and the humility for like 40 minutes, it might get better, but maybe. Of course, that's an excuse, so that's like a challenge, but I only got 20 minutes left, but. stop there but I got a few minutes left so because <clears throat> there's things I've done I haven't heard <coughs> just uh, just as soon hear them here 